What's up, future respiratory therapist? Hey, in this video, we're gonna be breaking down a practice TMC question all about dead space. Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, we're gonna be breaking down a practice TMC question uh, here today. Let's jump into it and let's look at the question. Uh, during mechanical ventilation, the RT, you, wishes to assess the VD to VT ratio. Now, why should you assess that? because it's an important process that you should understand. What information is needed to correctly calculate the VD to VT ratio? Choose all that apply. So here's your options here. Do you wanna choose the PaO2, the PaCO2, the entitled CO2, and size of the endotracheal tube? Choose whichever of those you think is appropriate. Pause this video, come back to it, and let's break this down. Now, what this question is really asking you is how do you calculate dead space? Because when you see VD to VT, it's saying dead space to tidal volume ratio. So how much of your tidal volume is actually effective? That's really the question that's being asked here. Now, here's the formula for the dead space formula. It is PaCO2 minus P in tidal CO2 divided by P arterial CO2. So the pressure of arterial CO2 minus the pressure of entitled CO2 divided by the pressure of arterial CO2. Now that sounds complicated, but here's how you can remember it. It's basically Paco, Pico, Paco. That's what it comes down to. So just remember those words, Paco, Pico, Paco. Why does that matter? Because it tells you dead space. Well, Paco, what is it? What is Paco? Paco is P-A-C-O-2. Now, we don't say Paco-2. We just say Paco. And we don't say Petco. We just say partial pressure of entitled CO2. Petco divided by Paco. So Paco, Pico, Paco. That's the formula you need to remember. Now, here's how it looks. When we look at our, our values that we need, we realize that all we need from this formula is our PaCO2 and our entitled CO2. Now, when we do this formula, what we find is that it's very simple. We do 42 because our arterial CO2 is 42 minus our entitled CO2. So 42 minus 38 divided by 42. Why? Because that's our Paco. That's our arterial CO2 content. So we do 4. 42 minus 38 is 4. 4 divided by 42. That equals 9.5%. So what we see here is that here we get 9.5%. Now when you do this, you're going to get 0 0.095. But then you multiply that times 100 to get it into a percentage. So 9.5%, okay? Now, when we look at this example over here, we see we got 42 and our entitled CO2 is 18. So now we see we're gonna go 42 minus 18 divided by 42. So what does this give us? Let's see here, 42 minus 18 is 24. 24 divided by 42 equals 0.57 and that equals 57 percent okay now let me tell you what you're looking at here you see this nine and a half percent right here tells you that nine and a half percent of your delivered tidal volume is ineffective that means the other 90 percent if you say nine and a half let's just say 10 percent right if 10% is ineffective, then 90% is effective. That means you have a very, very low amount of physiological dead space. Over here, we see our total is 57%. That means that 57% of the tidal volume that you are delivering is not participating with gas exchange. 57%. That means only 43% of that tidal volume is participating with gas exchange. So you see of these two patients, 
patient on this side of the screen has a much larger dead space problem. It's going to be much harder to ventilate this patient appropriately because only 43% of your tidal volume is actually being involved with gas exchange, participating in gas exchange. Only 43% is effective. However you want to say it, that's what we're trying to say. Where you look over here and you see that we're dealing at 9.5%, which we're going to call 10%, that means 90% of your tidal volume is participating in gas exchange. Now, let me give you a little trick here, okay? Because, see, you're probably going to have to do this on your TMC exam somewhere in the realm of, of dealing with a patient who has a femur fracture. They're at a high risk for a fat emboli, which is going to increase your dead space. So when you have that patient, what you're looking for is for them to give you the entitled CO2. If they don't give you the entitled CO2, you can't calculate effective tidal volume. You can't calculate VD to VT. So your first clue that this is a VD to VT question is the fact that they give you all of the information. You're going to get lots of questions and they're going to give you lots of data within all of those questions. But when they're asking about a dead space problem, such as a fat emboli associated with a fractured femur, they have to give you entitled CO2. They're only going to give you that information when you need it. There's going to be lots of questions where you, they don't give you entitled CO2. It's not a VD to VT question. But when they give it to you, you got to understand this is the time I need to know Paco Pico Paco because I'm probably going to have to figure out what my effective tidal volume is. Now, remember, when you do this formula, the percentage you get is the ineffective amount. So if 57% is ineffective, then 43% is effective, okay? And so uh, keep that in mind. That's what this formula tells you. And those are the only two numbers you need to calculate v VD to VT is your arterial CO2 as well as your entitled CO2. So we go back to the question. During mechanical ventilation, the RT wishes to assess the VD to VT ratio. What information is needed? to correctly calculate the VD to VT ratio. Choose all that apply. Well, remember, we didn't do anything with PaO2. Paco, pico, paco. PaO2, not an option. PaCO2, 100%. Your partial pressure of entitled CO2, 100%. Your size of the endotracheal tube, oh, it'll matter, but it's not needed to calculate your dead space amount. OK, so you realize that your arterial CO2 and the partial pressure of entitled CO2 are going to be the two values that you need to calculate your VD to VT ratio, which is going to tell you the amount of dead space. And you may ask yourself, why does this matter? And I'm going to refer to the 12th edition of Egan's here, like I commonly do. And I'm just going to say it like this, a VD to VT ratio greater than 60%, greater than 60%, generally requires continuation of ventilatory support. That's why it matters. Now, I'm gonna take it another sentence here because this is why it really matters. Increase the VD to VT in the early phase of ARDS has been associated with an increased risk of death. An increased risk of death. That's why it matters because your job as an RT is to save lives, to restore health, to fix the patients that you can fix in the appropriate amount of time. And if you understand this, then you understand why it is important to evaluate and to assess early on in the process because increased VD to VT in the early phase of ARDS is associated with an increased risk of death. I don't think any of us signed up to be a part of an increased risk of death. Keep that in mind. That's why it matters. Hey, this 
was a, a short episode all about one simple practice TMC question that you are going to get related to VD to VT ratio, your dead space formula. Um, come check this out over here. Um, on this page, you can find a link to this page in the video description below, but right here is a course that I've created that is completely free and it's full of free cheat sheets, waveform analysis and ICU checklist, some, um, some quizzes associated with some of the, the YouTube videos. It's just a free resource to help you along your way as you become a registered respiratory therapist. Also from this page, you will find the two boot camps. Everybody's talking about the boot camps, the TMC boot camp. Pass that exam on the first time with the high cut score. That program right there will aid you in that. And then you got to pass the clinical simulation exam. And that's where the CSE boot camp comes in. You can find these also on this page. And then there's two other courses here that if you struggle with arterial blood gases or you struggle with pharmacology, you can find my mini courses here as well from this page. I'm here to help. I hope I help. And, and that's my mission. I'm Respiratory Coach. Come find me on YouTube here at Respiratory Coach. You're already here now. Stay here. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button and leave me a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts on this question. Instagram at Respiratory Coach, TikTok at Respiratory Coach, and LinkedIn, LinkedIn at Joe Lewis. I will encourage every RT student right now to go create a LinkedIn profile, connect with me, and start building your professional network of colleagues right there on LinkedIn. I promise you, you won't regret it. Send me an email, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. If you have any questions over anything in this video, if you want a shirt, send me an email. I'll send you the link on how you can get your own Why Greater Than How shirt. Love to connect with you. Love to, to, to converse with you. Love to motivate, inspire, educate. That's what I do. And I love every second of it. Hey, at the end of the day, remember, average is easy. Don't be it.